Welcome, delighted that you've come to join us today. This is a whole new thing that we're trying out. I'm Stephen Barker. I'm the Dean of the Claire Trevor School of the Arts. We are um, across the street from the main campus. And one of the concerns that we've had over the 55 years since UCI was founded was letting both the on-campus and the off-campus community know that we're here. And since we do amazing numbers of productions in art, dance, drama and music, as well as a number of other areas here on campus, it occurred to us that it would be important to get the message out in new ways. And so we've established this new platform for letting you get to know some of the salient key people in the School of the Arts. We're going to begin with a series of meetings with the chairs of the four departments in the School of the Arts. We have Art, Dance, Drama and Music, and today, I'm delighted to welcome um, uh, to the screen next to me, the chair of the drama department, Don Hill, who's a longtime member of the faculty of the drama department, has a number of different roles. And so Don, welcome. It's great to have a chance to talk to you. Um, say a little bit about what's behind you on the screen and the way in which your various jobs actually fit into the drama department and the School of the Arts. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Barker. It's a pleasure to speak with you uh, today. So behind me is the red curtain of the Claire Trevor Theater, uh, which is a digital background, uh, but it's where we do the majority of our main stage shows uh, in our drama season. And it's a, it's a challenging time, clearly, as we're facing and dealing with COVID-19. But we're also very excited about exploring new technologies of bringing drama productions to a vast and even greater audience uh, through digital means uh, as we go forward. Wonderful. And I, one of the great strengths of the drama department has been its multiple roles in all areas of both the academic side and also, of course, the core of any drama department, which is the production side. You're not only the chair of the drama department, but really the at least ad hoc, if not actual, artistic director of the drama department, and in addition to that, the head of the stage management program. So one of the real questions that all of us have to ask you is, do you actually have a home other than your office on campus? Uh, I, I love so much what I do and, I, and I'm very passionate about what I do. So I have a, a very loving husband who's also in the arts. So that makes it easier, I think, uh, that we understand our crazy schedules that we have together. But right. I think that uh, my background in stage management where I began uh, has trained me well in terms of the skill of negotiation, of coordinating, of balancing budget with the mission, of trying and always working to give artists and artistic teams the tools that they need in order to succeed in bringing their production to the level that they wish to bring it into. I've served as vice chair for many, many years before becoming chair, and I think that was a helpful stepping stone in terms of putting things together uh, and understanding how far can we go with this given situation? And always realizing that everything's possible until it's not. So we just keep moving forward. <laughs> Say something about some of the really remarkable um, experiences, professional experiences that you brought to UCI when you came here, some of your professional background. Oh, thank you. I think for me, uh, when I was doing my first off-Broadway show, uh, it was a play called Secret Honor, and it was a one-man, two-to-force performance by the great actor Philip Baker Hall. And we were, it was being produced uh, uh, by a very high-end Hollywood producer, and we were in the third preview, and the actor playing Richard Nixon, which is what the story's about, uh, had a line flub up. He said, if I could die before I wake, he was sort of saying that child's prayer that children are sometimes taught. And I thought, what a brilliant line change. If I could die before I wake to get out of the, the hell of the Vietnam War. And I was writing the line change down because lines were changing like every hour. I would literally follow the playwright and the actors like to the bathroom, like they're changing lines and I don't know what the lines are. And so I remember after the, the show, I went up to the actor. I said, what a great line change. If, if I could die before I wake, he goes, did I say that? 
I said, yeah, <laughs> you did. He goes, wow, that's amazing. I went to the director, Robert Harders, and I said, did you happen to notice he said that? And he goes, no, but that's amazing. <laughs> I went to the playwright, Donald Freed, he had the same reaction uh, in terms of what that was. And I went to the producer and the producer was like, that is brilliant. So long way of saying when the reviews came out in the New York Times, third paragraph down, it said, if I could die before I wake, the heart and soul of this play. And I thought, yay, I got to contribute that as a stage manager by, by hearing it. So I think oh, part wonderful. of it is always staying in the present moment. Um, I, I did a number of uh, AIDS benefits um, before I came to UCI. And I think the most exciting one was one for Elizabeth Taylor. Uh, and it was at the Bonaventure Hotel in downtown LA, it just opened. And uh, Miss Taylor was not feeling well that day. And she was the centerpiece while everyone was coming to this event to see her. And we had many exciting celebrities who were serenading her. And just before we were to start, we got summoned to her table. And she said, gentlemen, I feel like hell right now. Can I just get my award and go? And, and the producer looked at me like, Don, fix it. And I said, okay. And I got on my knees with Miss Taylor and I held her hand and passionately begged her to stay because we needed her at that podium in an hour and 12 minutes for international coverage. And I just went back and forth how grateful we were. And she finally said, oh, screw you very much. I'll stay. I said, <laughs> Thank you. And we got up and walked away. So sometimes it's in these situations of getting people to do things, you're just willing them to make stuff happen. But that was kind of a highlight. Fantastic. Oh, what a great, what a great story. Well, we don't have Elizabeth Taylors here at UCI, but we do have a whole lot of students. And one of the top programs in the drama department traditionally has been the music theater program, um, a, a real signature program known across the country as being really the top of the discipline. One of the ways in which we always begin and end our production season in the drama department is with a musical production. Um, this has been really an earmark of the department and the quality of the productions has been really astonishing. And of course, here we are in the midst of COVID-19. I know that you have some pretty amazing plans for how you're going to cope with this new reality. Say something about the plans for the season for the drama department, beginning with the musical in the fall. Thank you. Uh, we're very excited about the projects I don't, uh, that we're going to be doing next year. Um, and part of having use of internet and Zoom and digital technology is that it sort of evens the playing ground. So what traditionally we call our big main stage shows and then our discovery series or other things, actually everyone's sort of on equal playing ground. So it will be the projects that we'll be exploring next year. Uh, we're actually creating a new musical. We've just commissioned um, the composer and writer this week to actually write a new musical about COVID-19. That, that's one of the paths that they're looking at, one of the, one of the uh, designs they're looking at. And they may come up with something else, but uh, it's very, very exciting. and. Uh, we're looking at, her name is Kate Chadwick, and she has worked with Marana Delaney, our head of musical theater program, in creating short mini musicals with the New York Satellite Program, which is another program that we're very excited about, where we bring 30 students to New York in the spring, and they study and train with professionals, and they, they work with creators and writers and composers to actually produce these mini musicals. So Kate and uh, her amazing partner, Josh, have agreed to uh, create an original musical for this fall. Uh, it'll be around 15 cast members. Uh, what's wonderful about that is that we can design it to serve our needs for the students. So it will be heavily female cast, probably 10 female roles, five, five male roles. Uh, it'll be age appropriate, which is also an issue sometimes when you're looking at musicals. And we're very excited about creating that. Um, uh, that so that'll be our fall musical. And then our spring musical, which is the all undergraduate musical, will be a play entitled Junk by Shakina, who is a transgender individual. And that means that both our musicals are original world premieres. So we're very excited to explore that and bring that. One of the other projects this year I'm really excited about is uh, our student groups. We have four on campus and they are all coming together to create uh, a working piece, a devised piece of theater that Juliet Carrillo will be directing entitled Resilience, uh, Resistance and Radiance. And so that will be 
the coming together of uh, the different four groups of the Black Door for African American students, Brown Bag Theater for Latina students, Theater Walk for Asian American students, and last but not least, our LBGT plus trans community. So they're all working together to have their voices expressed. Which brings me to our theme for next year is the Jubilee theme, which is about unheard voices, underrepresented voices, or disenfranchised voices having a voice. So when you're creating original work, you can certainly empower and support those voices that often don't get a seat at the table. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, it's one of the things that has so impressed me over the many years that I've been at UCI is the very strong ethical sense that the drama department has, uh, not only about the obligation, but also the desire to serve those communities. What better department on the campus to give a voice to the voiceless than a drama department, which to a certain degree is all about voices. But the way in which you've set up the Jubilee season to give these really wonderful opportunities to students to create their own work and to share that work not only with other small communities and large communities, but with the community as a whole is really wonderful. This is something that stretches over into, for example, the New York Satellite Program and into the showcases, which are all based on the ethical obligation to serve students who are just beginning what we all hope will be a career in drama. So I'd love to have you say something about the way in which drama training, drama preparation for the citizen artists in the drama department at both the undergraduate and the graduate level is really aimed at preparing the whole person for their technical but also their intellectual uh, and communicative role when they leave here. Some of the things that the drama department is involved in that actually prepare students, undergraduate and graduate, for the life after UCI. Sure. Um, first of all, I just want to note on the graduate level, the number of required units that a graduate in the drama department takes, regardless what area of discipline, is, is way above the actual average course units that all graduate programs are required to have at UCI. So the students are taking a whole lot of classes and many more classes and putting in many more units than they do in other areas, which I didn't really realize that until I became chair. I was like, whoa, that's amazing. Um, the same thing is very true for the undergraduates as well. Uh, they frequently graduate having an extra 10, 12, 14 units above the average that's just required. Hmm. I think, first of all, it comes back to the fact that drama is a composite art form. And so you have elements of literature, you have elements of design, which are in the areas of scenic and costume and lighting and sound and properties. You have music that's part of plays. So we have sound designers who compose and create original musicals uh, or original music that supports all of that. Then you have the performer who comes on stage to interpret what it is the literature is. You have the director who comes on stage to coordinate and, and create a cohesive vision of that. Then you have the people like stage managers who kind of make that all happen and large technical crews who are behind all of that. So there's many, many pieces that come together that need to come together to create this thing called drama. It's not just a dance. It's not just a piece of music. It's not just a piece of literature. It's all of it coming together. And because of the very nature of what drama actually is, going all the way back to the Greeks, it requires a lot of classes in a lot of areas. <laughs> and frequently, we find students uh, in their first years who thought they wanted to be an actor, and all of a sudden, after year two, they fall in love with sound design or costume design. They find different pathways that they go into. And so I think the discipline of having to know a lot about a lot of areas is also <laughs> part of what expands their perception and vision in order to create things. So some of our strongest programs in our undergraduate, we have honors in all areas, but the, uh, the New York Satellite Program that you reference is an amazing program that sends 30 students to New York to study and train and, and really understand what would it be like to live in New York City and pursue a career as an actor. Right. 
and we also have strong internship programs in our graduate areas in all areas. Um, in fact, um, Avery Reagan just won, was awarded uh, the top lighting internship internship in this country. And she beat out all the students from all the other top schools, God bless her, and uh, was a huge honor to the program, but also a testament to the level of the caliber of students that we have in our design programs. And we have students, both grad and undergrad, uh, a couple of years ago, I did a, a fun show called Avenue Q uh, about puppets, uh, naughty puppets, fun puppets. And one of the actors in that show, while we were in technical rehearsals, got a call from the folks at Book of Mormon to audition uh, for the national tour to understudy the lead role. And he went to that audition and he went to their summer camp, which they have, where they train them how to be familiar with that. And he ended up landing the role, and that's Jacob Benjamin Schmuel. And so his first real job out of undergrad school was being on the national tour of the Book of Mormon. Uh, another success story from that same cast, uh, Kaylin Fu, who graduated a couple of years ago, and she went to New York, and she had been knocking on doors and doing all what one does, and, uh, you know, she is now in Mean Girls on Broadway. So, I mean, it does happen, and, and not only in performance areas, but it also happens in areas behind the scenes as well. Uh, we have stage managers who end up in places like Cirque du Soleil, or the Hollywood Bowl, or they're on national tours. So, the department is training people, and I think the success record of where our students are landing is a testament to how well that discipline is uh, for what we give them. And, and part of that is, is a, there's a lot of rigor. Uh, some people who don't, uh, aren't so closely involved might think, oh, that looks like fun. They do plays or musicals, <laughs> isn't that fun? And, and it is fun, but it's a lot of concentrated work and focus. And so uh, students being very clear about what area of the industry they wanna play in. Uh, I teach a class called The Business of Show Business, and it's really a business class. It's 90% business and 10% show. But that's one <laughs> example of how we're preparing our students to understand how to deal with money and deal with rejection and disappointment and how to get focused and become unstoppable in pursuing the very thing that it is they wish to pursue. Fantastic. And in, in just in terms of preparing for the unknown, mm -hmm. I know that you have devised a really wonderfully elaborate set of tiered steps to prepare for what may or may not be happening on the UCI campus in the fall. Say a little bit, a bit about your, um, I, I feel as though you're uh, kind of uh, Elizabeth Warren of UCI. You've got a plan for this. Mm -hmm. And so say something about the plans that you've devised to support the drama department as you move into the great unknown, which is what we're going to be doing in the fall. Sure. So last fall, we had to uh, cancel uh, our musical, uh, and that was very heartbreaking for all of us. So I wanted to develop a plan where we never, ever, ever have to ever, did I say ever, cancel a show <laughs> again. So my plan A for the fall is that for the shows that we'll be exploring next year in our Jubilee season, that all of those will, the first plan A, they'll all start in a virtual format, whether that is they're in Zoom land, whether we mail green screen kits to actors and they set them up in their dorm rooms and we film them that way and then we put it all together in, in, in a jigsaw puzzle. But, but, but it will all be virtual so that those opportunities to perform and those opportunities for people to learn about working in recording and the whole virtual digital world, which is a very complex world and has many sides to it, that they'll get to have that experience regardless what happens. Uh, plan, that's plan A. Plan B is if we're able to bring some people to campus, whether that's in the winter term or whenever that uh, we're allowed to do that, that we can start to do that filming, that taping in our studios, on our stages, literally turn the Claire Trevor into a green screen sound studio if need be. And then that way, we can be working together with so safe social distancing, but we can be in the same room physically as we put the art together. So that's plan B. Plan C is we actually get to put it up on stage with a few audience members 
spaced apart. So we're doing uh, maybe what might feel like an invited dress rehearsal where you have a few special guests and we're working through it together. And then of course, plan D is when we can all get back to normal. But all of the shows are being designed this way so that they can pivot back to whatever stage they need to be at so that we're in compliance with university and California health regulations. The other thing that we will also be exploring, which I think will be enormously exciting, is getting into the world of virtual reality. Because there's a whole nother level of how people can experience through their senses through VR. And that is perhaps where the designers, particularly grad designers, I think will have a really, really exciting time. Yes. Half the students don't really know how to self-tape and submit an audition. They will learn how to do that because we will have auditions that way. There's so many amazing, exciting new things that we can learn because we have the restrictions that we have right now. So I think it's safe to say the drama department's going to dip a little bit into like, oh, I'm at film school, a little bit, uh, <laughs> while we still hang, hang, hang on to our traditions of how we do theater. But there's, there's so much... Uh, to be learned in this. And I'm really excited to launch this year and see where we go, because I think the sky's the limit, really. It's very, very exciting. And in fact, um, with all of the newly implemented and conceived ideas about how you're going to disseminate the great work that the drama department is doing, it sounds to me as though quite differently from thinking of this as a gigantic depressing downer, um, you're taking the attitude that the drama department can actually reach more people in more kinds of new ways next year. And that in fact, what we might've been working on over the next 10, 15 years in terms of advancing technologically, et cetera, can be actually catalyzed more quickly by the fact that we really pretty much have to do it in order to get the product out there. So it could be a wonderful opportunity in terms of opportunity, I think my last question to you, Don, would be just in terms of all of the really wonderful things that you laid out as happening in the department in this coming period of time. Say something about what you think of as being drama's role in the way in which um, we as a university and as a discipline within the arts and within the theatrical and dramatic arts, what is the role of the drama department in this difficult time, but also as a kind of cultural glue? What kinds of things should we be thinking about in terms of the role and relevance of the drama department? That's a great question, thank you. I think first and foremost, it's about communicating for this year particularly, voices that don't get heard very often. I think that's really important. A second prong to that question and answering it is, we've lightened up our season a bit. We've switched some shows that were sort of dark and heavy to comedies. I think it's really, really important that people laugh because I think laughter is very healing. And I think comedies in drama, drama or comedy, I mean, I think it can help people get through the day. It can help people yeah. refresh and reframe and, and, and kind of like, okay, that was a good laugh, let me go on. But, but within all that laughter driving behind it are that we're hearing many different voices. And it is the time in our country more than ever that there's a place for all voices to be heard and that all voices have value and how they're represented and, and how they're experienced by the community at large. I mean, it's interesting, the other day, someone was saying, well, what are you gonna do tonight now that we can't go out or whatever? And everybody's like, they're binge watching or Netflix watching, or they're doing all of that working or looking at something on a, on a TV screen. And I'm like, and where do you think they learn how to do that? <laughs> right? Where do you think they learn how to tell a story or put a production together? Because right now, those studios and those, co those companies, they're burning up really fast all their kind of stored content. So now they're doing grand revivals of the great That's classic right. of the 50s. But I mean, drama is the engine that provides all of those jobs, all of those opportunities, all of those creative expression that, that deal with the art of storytelling. And so I think 
This year, we have a lot to say from voices that don't get heard. And I think we have a lot to learn and explore in digital realities and digital designs and, and virtual realities where we've never gone before or never had to go before. And if, if I can close on a success note, uh, one of the things with COVID-19 that happened is that our in-person showcases that we do both in New York and LA had to be canceled, obviously. So what we did instead is we taped all of those and we not only sent them to the people on the actual list who were invited to those showcase, but we kind of sent them to the world at large. And sure enough, the response was the biggest we've ever had. Like if we learned a lesson from this, we learned like, <laughs> let's tape early, let's send it out early, and let's entice our managers and agents who may want to represent uh, our student actors early so that then maybe they'll come to the live performance. But a number of our students have signed already with agents and managers through just digital means, through seeing their work and having you know digital interviews. And our numbers are successfully higher than they've ever been before. And I think part of that is because we were able to reach a much wider audience. And that's very exciting. Well, it's always so wonderful to share your amazing infectious energy um, as the core, the heart, the center of the drama department, which I know that you are. Um, just wonderful to hear what's going on in this department, which a couple of years ago received the really very rare accolade of being designated as a program of excellence on the UCI campus. You can tell why that was the case. Drama really is a remarkable department. Um, uh, you out there who are sharing this opportunity with us, uh, I want to say a very, very warm and hearty thank you to Don Hill, the chair of the drama department, for joining us today to reveal some of the really remarkable things that are going on in the School of the Arts and its drama department for next year. We have a brand new website um, in the School of the Arts. Please feel free to consult that to see some of the really remarkable opportunities for seeing and hearing some of the things that Don has laid out. This is a new series which we put together in the School of the Arts. We're just calling it Arts Talk because they do. And so from month to month in the coming period of time, I'll be having chats with the chairs of the other departments in the school, with staff members and faculty members, and with students to talk about their experience in the arts, their experience at UCI, and the way in which they are able to share their wonderful enthusiasm for a life in the arts that's both building and that is already having wonderful professional outcomes. So thank you very, very much for sharing this opportunity to have a chat with you today. Arts Talk is going to be, a, as I say, a monthly feature here on the website. Come back and talk to us again in the future. Don, thank you so much for joining us. Please come and see us over in the Claire Trevor School of the Arts.